half of my brain was like, that's the coolest thing ever, breaking your arm by a LaFerrari, like, there's nothing cooler than that. The other half of my brain was more like, you're in big trouble here, what do you do? So my dream is to always be surrounded by the most expensive cars in the world, do whatever you want, be throwing the keys, take them out, do the whole, you're in a game, climb over them, start them up, rev them up, and uh, there's always something you only dream of. Now, of course you know as being in Dubai, they always have the craziest cars, but they're very secure and very private about their private collections. Now, when I went out there six months ago, I've been following this page on Instagram that started around June, July, and they were called The Space. And they started posting LaFerraris, Paganis, and of course that caught my interest. And I thought, okay, I started following these, and for that time, coming up to November, they were saying they were gonna open up soon. And I was gonna go to Dubai two, three weeks after they posted that. So I thought, okay, I'll contact them and see what these were about. Presuming I thought this would be a new public showroom in Dubai where they would showcase some of the hypercars that I could see. Now it turned out to be they were just a private collection, and I thought, okay, We'll see if I can try and visit it when I'm out there. So whilst I was out there, I was at the historical Grand Prix at the Dubai Autodrome, and uh, the cars were zooming past, and it was our last day, and I thought, right, this is my time, I've got one night, let's just ring them, bite the bullet, and see if I can visit this showroom, this collection. So I rang up and said, hi, I'm Josh, I'm from Scoot Supercars, I follow these cars around the world, would I be allowed to visit? I've got two of my mates with me, and uh, they were like, okay, yeah, what would you film for? And I was like, well, today I've just been filming with Shami. You know, we were doing some car stuff and everything. And you could hear their eyes light up. You know, they were like, oh, Tim, Shami. Clearly because they've just started out and they want influencers to come. So I was saying, yes, but he's uh, he won't be able to come with me. He's filming other stuff. And But they were like, no, no, please come tonight. Please come. We can uh, greet you, meet you, and uh, you can see the cars. Now, already for me, that was my dream to think that, oh my God, I'm gonna be able to see these cars and these collections, not knowing what's even in the collection. I know they posted, like I said, a LaFerrari, a Pagani here, and I thought, right, let's go for it. So I caught a taxi around eight o'clock at night, and it's literally in the middle of the desert. There's a few industrial states around. The taxi driver dropped me off, and it's pitch black. And then all of a sudden, it was all I can describe as like New York time, like billboards, it lit up saying, Shamiz team, welcome. I looked at my mates and I was like, oh no, I'm not with Shami and I'm not part of his team. But in the phone call, I think because I had Formula One cars zooming past me, I think they actually thought I was part of Shami's team. So I'm standing in front of like a 300 inch TV screen saying, welcome Shami's team. And I'm like, right, I'm, I'm Josh. I'm not part of Shami's team. So I wasn't too sure what to suggest and what to do. And then uh, all of a sudden I've got five security guards walking towards me. And I'm like, okay, I forgot I am in Dubai here. This is gonna be secure. Let's just smile and wave and hope for the best. They greeted me and said, uh, who did you speak to on the phone? I said this and that. And then all of a sudden this massive metal gate opens and it's like you've just gone into another world. You know, you're just here with this massive glass building. You can't see anything, it's pitch black. So all it looks like is some factory at an industrial state. And uh, I was like, okay, this is it. I wonder what's inside. And they greeted me, they took my name down, all my details, and I thought, right, if this is the way I'm gonna go out, I've come to the right place. If it's with hypercars, then, you know, I'm, I'm fine. So, and then they have these massive Formula One posters on these buildings, and I thought, it's getting better, it's getting better. And then all of a sudden, the glass doors just slide open, and they've got this one white turntable in the middle, and the Bugatti Devo sat in the middle, and uh, my jaw went from here to down there. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, this Bugatti Devo is just facing me. And I thought, wow, okay, this is something special. And, and then all of a sudden you look around the corner peeking and there's another Bugatti Devo. And I'm like, wow, this is the dream for me to see all these hype cars in one. And I thought it'd be like a showroom. They'd all be with ropes behind them. I wouldn't be able to take photos because it's a private collection. And, uh, and they greeted me, uh, these two young people, and they were very happy to meet us. And then, all the nerves kind of dropped and it wasn't like a showroom feeling. It was as if they'd been given keys to just play around with these cars. It was as if you were in a game like GTA, you were in the lobby, you could buy any car you want, they've chucked it in here. If you want to climb on that car there, you can do it. They said, right, I've got 20 hypercars here, here and there. Pen, paper, 
you write down what you want to do and you're going to come back here tomorrow and you're going to film whatever you want. And I was like, okay, I've never had this before. I've been to showrooms, I've done all of this. And I was like, where do I begin? And I was like, well, do you want to park the Bugatti here? Do you want to have a LaFerrari here? Do you want to have a Pagani here? And me and my mates were just looking at each other like, what? It doesn't seem real. So we had a good sit down with them. We, we talked about it all and said who we were. And they just wanted us to write down where we wanted to put these cars. There was 20 cars in the showroom. All limited edition, all special, all uh, meaningful. So some had special specs, some had special numbers, also history. So we started creating like a circle where we wanted to park the cars. We did all of that and then hoping the next day we'd be able to come back and film where they wanted to. But they was like, no, no, stay a bit, stay a bit later. This is nine o'clock and their place is shut. And, uh, and then they got the box of all the keys and said, yeah, do what you want. So we ended up sitting in pretty much all the cars. It was always been a dream of mine to sit in a Pagani. And they had a Pagani Wire Roadster. This was number six out of 100, so it was one of the early ones. Full blue carbon. I was like, yeah, yeah, jump in it, it's fine. Just to have that moment to sit in a Pagani was incredible. You know, we sat, both of us, me and my mate, and we're like, wow, this is quite crazy. No, 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 jump in this one next. It's a Ferrari Monza. You know, there's just hypercars keep coming and coming, and it was incredible. And then the guy was like, right, let me start them up for you. And we were in this, of course, room, showroom, and you can imagine a V12 starting up in this room, and the Monza sounded incredible. And then you went to the next one, which was an SA Aperta, and uh, being one of 80 and one of my all-time favorite Ferraris, hearing that in the showroom was uh, something else. The way they just started up all the cars, it just didn't feel real. It felt like I was in a dream where this was just one room, one roof, and all these cars here, they've got a Formula One car above that comes apart and does a little dance that will come below. They've got these massive screens all around the place that project crazy animations that flash all over the cars. It's as if you've given, it sounds bad saying, like a seven year old, a hundred million pounds and they do what they want. But they've done it where it's so special, so unique. It's, um, you know, it's absolutely impressive to see all this different architecture, the memorabilia around the place. Uh, they have this golden rocket. I don't know why they've got a rocket, but they've got a rocket. And they've got bikes on the walls, famous uh, guitars from musicians. And then they're like, right, you're gonna wait here. All of a sudden they bring out this uh, Brabus uh, G63 uh, Adventure XPL. And they say, right, what do we want to do with this? And of course, I'm more of the hypercar. So I'm like, oh no, this is really cool. Like, well, why don't you jump, jump in the back of it? I was like, okay. So they said, I mean, do you want me to take my shoes off? What do you want me to do? No, 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 you're going to climb on, climb on top. And I just paused for a second. I was like, right, did I just hear you right and saying you want me to climb on top of this? And I think they looked at me as if they want to, for me to have as much fun as possible. You know, they want to show you that this is the real deal, the space of the ones. Before you know it, I'm standing on top of this G63, looking over this showroom, as if I'm literally in a video game. I'm climbing on this car, of course with respect, but just surfing on top, and they would drive it very slowly, and I'd be going through the showroom, stood on top of this car, about seven foot in the air, with LaFerraris below me, just vibing away. Me vlogging, of course, making a video on this, but to, to be fair, I was just more taken back by what I was actually doing, stood on top of this car. And I know that I sent it to my mum and she had a right go at me because I was stood on top of a car and she was more worried I was going to fall off, let alone they're actually driving me stood on top. And, uh, and then it comes down to the LaFerrari and they're like, no, why don't you sit in it? And I thought, oh, that'd be amazing. I've sat in a few LaFerraris before and just to be in that special place, it was the first ever hypercar I got to go in. And to me, it's such a special car. You know, for me, it's one of the best cars ever made for my generation, let's put it that way. So I sat in it, got all my snaps, all my photos, course because I was so taken back I dropped my phone and it went on the floor so I go go to pick it down uh, pick it up and all of a sudden the guy's got this uh because the, the LaFerrari's got their like swan doors they come up he grabs the door and just drops it on my arm without him knowing I've dropped my phone down below before you know it the door has come down on my arm and um because I was so taken back with respect like they invited me here I couldn't scream out and cry I couldn't look like a wimp I didn't know what to do, but this hydraulic door came straight on my arm and I thought that was game over. I thought I snapped my arm. The pain was awful, but half of my brain was like, that's the coolest thing ever, breaking your arm by a LaFerrari. Like, there's nothing cooler than that. The other half of my brain was more like, you're in big trouble here, what do you do? And I, I've never felt pain like it. And this door came on me and uh, I think he thought it, well, I think he thought he's, 
slam the, uh, slam the door as normal, but little did he know my arm was still in there. So I had to quickly click the button and put the door up and uh, jumped out. So he's probably like, oh, he didn't want to sit in that for long. Well, there was me holding my arm and crying in the back. That was a very painful moment and that just shows how crazy the experience was. And a few days later, my arm was black bruised and uh, mum was like, oh, what have you done to your arm? And uh, I had to be honest and tell her that uh, a three million pound car nearly broke my arm. And luckily it didn't, you know, I'm here to tell the tale, but um, that hurt a lot. But the whole showroom, the private collection is just something I've never experienced. They've got an stunning example of the McLaren Elva. And I even asked them personally, why do you have one in the exact matching spec? And their answer was, why not? And I was like, fair enough, why not? They've got two matching Elvas. They had two matching LaFerraris, one being the Coupe, one being the Aperta and uh, they're the yellow 918. But they had, which is something I've always wanted to see, was one of the carbon edition McLaren P1s. Now they made five of them and uh, me tracking cars, I kind of tracked them around the world and I know Dubai had two or three at the time. They had one in front of me and I was filming it all and I thought it was incredible. And then when they showed me the next half of cars, there was another one and I thought, blimey, two carbon edition P1s. And the only difference was the red Alcantara on the driving bay. So they were, again, pretty much matching. Funny enough, a few weeks later, after I went back to the UK, they put up an Instagram story, and you can see in the background, they actually had a third one. A few years ago, one of the carbon editions actually crashed and uh, never got rebuilt. So technically there's four carbon editions, and uh, they actually had three in one room, which I think was amazing. And uh, the last one's in America. So knowing the space, they will probably get it at some point. And which was very special for me, and very rare to be fair, of course, following Shami throughout the years, he always gets first pick with everything. Don't get me wrong, it's because he is the best in what he does. If it's a new car, he's at the launch. If it's a, a new showroom somewhere in the, in the world, they've invited him to it, you know, he's gonna open it. He will get the first video no matter what. No one competes against him. However, with the space, and because I was with him that day, I was actually the one that introduced him to the space. I was like, Tim, I think you'll have to check this place out. And uh, so I was very happy. I actually got there before him and I was really, you know, really happy. I was like, oh, I can get my video out before him and all of this and all of that. Uh, and Tim went a few days after and actually still got the video out before me because he's just so on it. You know, he, he did it all and he got to take out the cars. But um, I sent him the photo that night of me standing with all the cars. And uh, of course, I know Shmi has seen everything in the world. I know he's seen all the cars, but the, D uh, the DM he sent me of his response, it blew my mind. He couldn't believe it. And that's when I knew I had one of the coolest opportunities seeing these hypercars. Who wants a free carbon fiber ring? Well, right now, Patrick Adair Designs is giving away a free carbon fiber ring with any purchase if you use the code VINWIKICF at checkout on their website. You can find them at the link in the description below. You can also follow along on Patrick Adair's YouTube channel. You've seen him here telling car stories, but over there, he documents his journey in entrepreneurism and some of the amazing things they do to create rings out of the most interesting materials from Earth and from space. So check them out now and thank them for their support of VINWIKI.